We go now to Miami and it's Mayor Republican Francis Suarez. Uh, welcome back to the program. I want to ask you about what is happening with the migrant crisis in this country. Is your city receiving enough support from both the state and the federal government? Well, we haven't received any support as of yet from the federal government um, that we are aware of. We checked to see if we had gotten any help from FEMA. Uh, it turns out we have not. Um, it is a migrant crisis uh, in our city as well. Just in the last two months, the Coast Guard has processed 408 uh, migrants in our on our coast. Uh, we've uh, just last year in our public school system, we had uh, over 14,000 new children, 10,000 of which came from, you know, four uh, countries of, of Cuba, Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Haiti. Um, and that's the equivalent of five new 2,000 student yeah. schools. I mean, that's a tremendous a burden uh, on our system. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite proud of, of Mayor Adams from New York for standing up uh, and talking about how this is impacting the, the, the city of New York. I mean, he has to focus on on crime reduction. And instead, you know, you see images of police officers helping people in the, the classic Roosevelt Hotel yeah. um, uh, find housing. And so, you know, these officers uh, uh, should be, and you'd want them to be focused on, on reducing crime and instead have to deal with this uh, migrant crisis, which, as you've said, uh, should be a federal issue. Uh, I want to ask you about what's happening at the state level because Florida did just pass, and your governor, Ron DeSantis, signed into law um, a, a new policy as of February that will make it a felony to knowingly and willfully transport an undocumented person, even if it's a family member. I know the Miami-Dade Police Department said they uh, are not planning on pulling over drivers. What are you going to instruct Miami Police Department to do? Well well, you know, we, we, we don't get involved in, in federal um, issues like that. You know, we pull well, over state people law. Uh, for, yeah, we pull over people for, for, for state, uh, for, for traffic infractions and things of that nature. We don't usually get involved in the federal uh, immigration gotcha. enforcement system. We never have as a city. Um, and I don't, I don't believe that we plan to in the future. Um, so that, that, uh, that doesn't really apply to the city of Miami. It's, it never has. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to use, from what I understand, the Florida Highway Patrol, which is the, um, the state-controlled police department to, uh, to enforce that law. Um, it's also going to require businesses to verify that employees can legally work in the U.S. It's going to require hospitals to include citizenship questions on intake forms. Um, is there going to be an impact on your city? Uh, there's concerns about labor shortages, for example. Well, you know, first of all, I think it is already legal to hire an undocumented uh, worker in the United States of America. So I'm not sure if that changes much the current law or the current state of the law. Uh, in terms of uh, how it impacts the city of Miami, you know, we have a 1.8% unemployment rate, which is fantastic. Um, when you want to open up a new business, definitely we need workers. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, this entire debate and discussion screams for a national solution. And I think that's what we should be focused on yeah. as a country, um, uh, solving this problem in a way that, um, you know, e A, right-sizes legal immigration so that uh, uh, we can have uh, Americans that want to work and mm -hmm. that are working legally. Am I hearing you say that some of these state laws are just theater? Because you're saying a lot of these things don't actually practically apply. Yeah, I think, I think some of them uh, are headline grabbers, without a doubt. Um, is that know, what your governor, them, governor's doing intentionally? I, I think I think I think you could argue that for sure. Uh, I think I think some of them are substantive. For example, he's sending a thousand uh, law enforcement officers to the border at the request of the governor of Texas. Um, you know, I think that that that's something that could have a, a, a positive impact in interdicting and helping, uh, you know, with people who are on the terrorist watch list and they've catched, uh, you know, people who are uh, smugglers and coyotes. Mm -hmm. So that that can be help. And, and you have to be careful with that as well, because, you know, we are on the eve of hurricane season. So, uh, you know, you have to you have to make sure that the resources that are being used uh, are resources, yeah. uh, you know, that we can deploy here in the state of Florida if we need them as well. OK, um, I want to continue our conversation on the other side of a commercial break here, because I know you are considering and you have said you might run for president. So I have a lot more questions for you. So we'll be right back with a lot more Face the Nation. Stay with us. Welcome back to Face the Nation. We continue our conversation now with Miami's mayor, Francis Suarez. So, sir, when will you announce you're running for president? 
Well, it, it's got to be soon uh, because uh, the first debate is August 20th. Uh, I'm someone uh, who uh, needs to be better known by this country. And so I think uh, the Republican Party has said there's going to be a debate a month from August all the way through January 8th, which is the Iowa caucus. So you have to take every opportunity uh, to share your story, to share your vision, and to try to inspire the American people uh, to choose uh, what you're trying to, to offer them. So uh, I think uh, it would have to be soon uh, in order to make the debate stage. There's a couple of criteria that you have to uh, follow. One of them is is you have to be at least 1% in the polls, which I think shouldn't be a problem. And secondly, you have to have 40,000 unique individual contributions, and that takes a little bit of time. So the, the clock is ticking. Um, it's a soul-searching process uh, with my family. Um, and every mm -hmm. single day, uh, we talk about it, my wife and I, and we're getting much, much closer to making a final decision. That sounds like the only word you're not saying is yes, but you're leaning in pretty heavily there. Um, Trump advisor Kellyanne Conway was, was quoted as saying uh, you'd be among the best possible draft picks as a running mate for President Trump. Would you join a ticket with him? Look, it's flattering uh, to be in any discussion uh, for the vice presidency or the presidency. Um, you know, I was, my parents came to this country at 12 and seven from Cuba, exiled from their country of birth. Uh, I never thought in a million years that I would ever be on Face the Nation with you uh, talking about the possibility of running for president. Uh, I think that demonstrates the greatness of this country, uh, that this country provides opportunities to everyone um, who cares about the American dream. Uh, that's how I've right. grown up. Uh, you know, but, I've grown up as a But you've as a also said that country, the country is so. looking for someone who is aspirational and inspirational, not divisive. Is Donald Trump a unifier? Would you stand with him on a ticket? What I've said is that I'm aspirational and inspirational, and that if I do run for president, uh, people should vote for me okay. because I represent something different, uh, and I can appeal to a different uh, segment of our country, which is you know voters under 30 that Biden won by yeah. 26 points, uh, people in cities that I won uh, my city by 86 percent and, and was reelected okay. by 80 percent. Um, and Hispanics, uh, as, as a Hispanic yeah. uh, American, I think it's important uh, to be able to con connect with uh, a, a you know voting demographic that's growing and that's trending more Republican. Let but, me ask you. Uh, it's, that's happening. Yeah. Let me ask you on that, though. Has, um, there was some reporting in your local papers about uh, your job and side job that you hadn't disclosed. Will you release your tax returns if you run for president? Of course, uh, and I have to disclose uh, all the jobs that I have. It really shouldn't matter how many jobs I have. What should matter is how I do my primary job, uh, which is being the mayor of Miami. And nobody uh, criticizes that. I'm also okay. the president of all the mayors in the United States. Uh, yeah. You know, we, our success story in Miami is very, very incredible. You know, we've lowered taxes to the lowest level in history and grown 12 percent, the second most mm -hmm. in recorded history. Uh, we have the, the lowest okay. per capita homicide rate since 1964. And this year, we're 40 percent below right. that number. Uh, you know, and, and we, uh, we're number one in the nation in wage growth and number one uh, in unemployment. So I don't know why my local paper is obsessed with how many jobs I do. I think they should be focused on the job of being mayor, which I think I do a great job. Okay. Of. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, we look forward to talking to you about the job you might be seeking in the future. We'll be right back.